um, it's not a, this webinar is not so much a question of getting traffic to your website. It's it's all about what what your website should be. So it's before we start getting traffic to the site, a lot of people have sites or they're going to be getting websites for their business or local service or whatever it is. So it's not a question of traffic. It's a question of what your website should encompass, what you should be including on your website and everything related to the site itself. So that, that's the first point. Um, the second point is that, yes, Tracy, as Tracy said, I have a, a, what they call a private label rights uh, video series. It's 20 videos um, that I've purchased that I'm entitled to give to whoever I like. So for those that are looking to either learn WordPress, which we'll chat about a little bit later, or that you want to, um, you know, you've got a WordPress site or you want to build a WordPress site, it's, it's quite a nice, simple way of actually getting started. It covers everything in, in sequence from kind of video one to 20. So at the end of the, the webinar, I'll put my email link. You can mail me if you want it, and I'll send you the link where you can download it from Google Drive. Um, other than that, yeah, let, let's get started. So um, what I'm going to just quickly show you guys, if that's okay, is this is what we're going to be covering today. And this is really the, the, the crux of the matter. It's basically what you should be doing on your website to generate business correctly. Um, so the points that will be covered, and we'll do this in this, in this order, we're going to just talk about a quick short introduction so that everyone is comfortable with who this webinar is for and if this is for you and what you can expect. Then we're going to talk about the importance of your website or of having a website. After that, we're going to talk about the five non-negotiables. And that is five points that are absolutely not negotiable that every website should have. Um, and that's kind of, uh, you'd be surprised at how many websites don't actually include these. The next point that we're going to cover is the importance of mobile, i.e. viewing websites and websites on smartphones. Then we're going to talk about what is probably the, the, the most important part of the webinar is the conversion tactics. And that is what you, what you should be including on your website in order to convert. And what we, what we mean by convert is to get the action that you want somebody to take. So, if it was a WooCommerce or an e-commerce website, a shopping site, what should you have on your site to, to give the, the person the most amount of confidence to actually buy? If you're a local business, um, what you should include on your website, same story. So what should you actually have on the website? Um, and that's possibly the most important part of the webinar. Then I'm going to give you guys some good news about just about where, if this sounds all a lot of, uh, and it's too difficult and it sounds... Like it's a whole lot of technical stuff. I want, I want to just tell you what the good news is. And then as Tracy said, we're going to have a QA. and a And on this webinar, what we're going to do is I'm going to devote more of the time to the q and I'm going to try to run through the, all the content and the meat of the webinar as quickly as I can, which should take about 35 minutes so that we can allow for 20 to 25 minutes of Q&A. So that's going to be the structure of what we're going to do. Right, I hope everyone's still awake. Wait, that's not yet. Let's talk first. Right. So the first thing that I want to discuss with you guys, and I'm going to show you um, as we go, is who the webinar is for. And um, I just want to open something up here. So we're going to discuss who this webinar is for. It's pretty much for everyone that's got a a business. I mean, whether or not you have a lo local business, what I mean by local business is if you provide local business services, plumber, electrician, handyman, whatever it is, local business services to the, to the people in your surrounds, um, as well as for people that have shopping sites. So they have a website that they're selling um, good goods to in any type of e-commerce site, the likes of a take lot or any of the other e-commerce sites that we know. It pretty much is for everyone. If you have a website or you don't have a website, I think that this um, webinar should be able to give you a little bit of insight and a little bit of structure as to what you should be thinking about regarding your website that you have or that you're thinking of building in the future. 
And the first thing, the first point of call is the importance of having a website. And excuse me for looking to the side, but I've just made some notes of things that I'd like to cover and, and just to read through with you. And the first reason that, that you would actually have a website is a website is the first place that people go to check out a potential purchase or for more information about your service. Also importantly to know is that people do this at all times of the day and night. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that we see on websites at three in the morning, not something that I do, but people are, are doing it. So it's, it's kind of like having your business card available at all hours of the day and night, and people will always come and, come and check it out. The other thing is before people engage with you is that it gives you credibility. Um, so they'll come and check out a potential service or, or a product, and it gives you credibility if you have a website. If you don't have a website, uh, people are a little bit more reluctant or reticent to actually engage with you because it's not that they see you as a fly by night, but it, it makes you more solid to have a website. The third one is efficiency. So a lot of questions that people would ask, uh, you can actually, or you can just direct them to your website. So you could, whether or not it was your opening hours or um, do you do local deliveries or do you do call outs or whatever those kinds of things, you can actually make yourself, you don't want to need to be answering those calls on a phone. You can just say, please go and have a look at my website and it should be able to answer all those questions for you. So it also makes you a lot more efficient. You don't have to deal with those simple queries that can be categorically just stated on the website. And the last one also very important is it allows you to start building a database of potential clients. So not everyone buys now, not everyone goes and, and uh, need, needs a, a plumber or an electrician. Okay, those are a little different because there is emergency, but a service that, that might be needed in the future, but they may well come to your website and say, you know what, keep us, keep us informed of your future offers, keep us informed of any news that you have, and it'll allow you to, to actually very, very easily build a database of those potential clients that you can mine in future to get business from. So those, I don't want to hop too much on that, but that's, I'm sure most people would, would know that the importance of having a website, but it is important in this day and age to have your your business as a digital presence on the web. Again, not going to hop too much on that. The next thing to talk about is the importance of your website. And the importance of your website, uh, sorry, are the five negotiables. The five, should we say, non-negotiable. Now, the five non-negotiables, what I call it, what is what I, whenever I engage with clients or I build a website for myself, it's kind of the five points that every website need, needs to actually encompass. And these are, let me actually put it on here just so that we don't talk. I'm actually just going to open a notepad file here and just, by the way, at the end of this webinar, um, Tracy mentioned that she will be sending the, a copy of the presentation to you. So you should all be getting this, but for the non-negotiables, these are what they are. And as I say, sorry, I know this is a little bit boring, but it's important that we just cover this. The first one is a decent looking site. Again, stating the obvious, but you wouldn't believe um, the dog's breakfast type of websites that clients come to me and say, you know, I need business. Have you got a website? Yes, I've got a website. And it absolutely looks like a, an atrocious. So a decent, it doesn't need to be fancy, but it's kind of got to look neat and tidy and in, in there is no spelling mistakes which I would think are, are obvious, but number, you've got to have a decent looking site. The next one, and this is where a lot of people get it wrong, is especially if it's an e-commerce site, but even if it's a local service site, product images or images that are on the website. Again, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that are trying to sell products online that have got their... Auntie Matilda to take an iPhone and I say to them, but you know, you, you're asking somebody to spend four and a half thousand rand and your product images are, you can't even see them. They're not on the background. Product images, and I actually want to harp on this a little bit because it's, it should be a very big takeaway for everyone. The, the money that you're going to be spending on generating business for your website online 
This is golden nugget number one, as I call it. Product images, product images, product images. Spend money. Instead of spending money on a website builder, spend money on the images because you can actually, and I'll show you at the end, you can get the website done yourself or you can get it done cheaply. The, the best marketing money that you can actually spend is on your products or website images. Golden nugget number one. I'll try to think of some others for you later. Number three, contact page. Every website should have a contact page. Um, again, you wouldn't believe some people, what they do is they stick their telephone number and their email address at the bottom of the website. It's kind of the correct protocol to have a contact page. You can have a form on the page where people can contact you. You can have a form plus your email address, your address, your telephone number and that, but you need to have a contact page on the website. Another one, critically important, website speed. Um, what a lot of people get wrong is they build a website and they, they put it on a hosting company and the website, the oh, homepage. Right. All right, sorry about that. So the website speed, again, it's, it's not only important from a user experience point of view, i.e. when people come onto your website, it's actually part of, uh, it's actually one of the, the ranking factors in Google, which we're not, we're not talk, talking about SEO. We covered that on a, on a separate webinar, but critically important that your website loads quickly. And the last one is something that also a lot of people don't take into account, which is an SSL certificate. SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. Most web hosts now have them free. I'll show you what it looks like on an actual site. On, on, if we go to my website, if you have a look at your browser, I'm sure you all can, if you can all just see this little lock, that lock means that the site is secured by SSL. So you, what you do is you put a, a free SSL certificate on your site. It's done through your web hosting company where you actually are hosting is where you actually get the certificate installed. 90% of web hosts have a free one. And, and if you have a WordPress site, you can definitely get a free one, but in, very important because people are starting and with security, people are more and more aware that I want to be on websites that are showing this site. If this was the next, point that I want to cover is the importance of mobile. Now, mobile being smartphones and, and phones themselves. We all have phones. We, <laughs> we all spend too much time on our phones. But if you want to know how powerful phones are for people viewing your website, and I've just got two little stats just to show you. The importance of mobile can't be overstated. I want to spend a little bit more time on this as well because I think it's underplayed. And when people build websites and web developers, they, they kind of build your beautiful looking site and yet they're not doing anything for you for mobile. The site's not responsive, et cetera. We'll talk about that now. But what this is showing you, it's just a little infographic showing you the percentage of global mobile traffic, meaning people that are viewing all different websites. So. It's more than 50%. So more than 50% of people will be viewing your website from a smartphone. So that's point number one. Some more little crazy stats that you should know about um, uh, mobile. I won't hop on it too much, but it is important to emphasize this. 6.4 billion smartphone users. The times that people are spending, and we don't need to tell us, we, I'm sure we're all, all the same. But on average, this is a US number. The average person spending on average two hours, 55 minutes on their, on their smartphone. Um, a very interesting stat, people that are using phones for product research, 70% of internet users prefer to look for reviews on their phones rather than employ, in, approach an employee. But it's more than that. It's people will actually look for reviews on whatever your product or service is. So it doesn't have to be a physical e-commerce product. That one is about mobile apps. Um, six out of 10 shoppers say the possibility to shop by mobile is, is an important factor in brand consideration. Also important, they all, these points are all pointing to the same thing. Okay, this one is showing 54% of global traffic. The other one was 52 for last year, but it's, it's close enough. So again, not to harp on it, but what, what is this telling us? This is telling us that your 
mobile website, the way that your website looks, feels, and performs on a smartphone is more important than how your website appears on a, on a desktop or a laptop computer. I'm going to repeat that. It sounds crazy. The way that your website is performs, looks, and feels on a mobile website more important than how it appears here. This is so now, if we look at my website on desktop, it looks fine. But what I've done is I've made sure that on mobile, it's world-class because that's where, that's where the action happens. That's where you're going to get the visit. People are using more and more on the mobile is where it happens. Another important thing that you should know about mobile is that from a local search point of view, meaning again, for local services, we've all seen those Google Maps and the local business listings, Google is pushing for, for those type of results to appear more and more on mobile. So everything points, everything, all channels point. Your mobile website, it doesn't matter how good or how, how bad, okay, so an overemphasis, but it doesn't matter how bad your desktop website is. If your mobile website is unbelievable, you sort it. Um, and again, Google or Google or pushing more and more for webmasters, a webmaster, somebody who builds a website to, to do their, their website with a mobile first approach. So that means that your, your mobile website loads fast. All the, everything happens from mobile first. They even, Google moved towards what they call lo um, local first indexing. That means that they will give you credibility if your mobile website performs well, more than if your desktop does. So it's called Google Mobile First Indexing, and they've moved towards that. So they also realize mobile's where it's at. Okay, how much how are we doing for time, Tracy? 25. All right, I want to try to cover the last few points in 10 minutes. And this is now the kind of the, the most value that I would say that you can get now. Conversion tactics. So Nick, what I'm going to try and do, this is golden nugget number two three, four, and five all put together. What I mean by conversion tactics, I'm just going to show you quickly on my website. The conversion for me on my website would be, I want people to get hold of me, let's chat. So the conversion would be on my website, somebody's a lead, what we would call, let's chat. So that's conversion. On an e-commerce website where they're selling products, the conversion would obviously be a sale. So Again, the, the, same principle of, the same principles apply for both e-commerce websites or local business sites. What do we need to have on our website to, to get the user to take the action on our website that we want them to take? And that's a conversion. Now, I will share this with you. And I've learned over the, the years with a lot of trial and error and reading research, et cetera, and, and, and playing around. But I'm going to share this with you. Um, also, if you if you mail me and you want the WordPress course or you want this blog post, Tracy, if I can actually just pop this into the chat, I think that will be quite useful. And if people want it, this is my holy grail. Why well, can't I get the chat going? Thanks, Gary. Um, all right, I'm not going to I don't know why, but I can't seem to open the chat. Uh, let's just see why. Oh, there we go. Okay, the tool boy disappeared. There's a guy by the name of Neil Patel. I'm not sure if any of you know him. He's, he's in the top 10 online marketers in the world, I would say. Quoted all over the world, seminars, a real uh, guru. Um, and I've followed a lot of his principles over the years. And this post that I've just given you now is, it's kind of my holy grail in terms of how do we get websites to convert? What should we be, besides for those five basics that I talked about earlier, the decent looking site, the product images, what else do we need to in, include in our website that will get the person to take the desired action, i.e. to get a conversion, right? And I want you guys, I just want to go through this with you, but I want you guys to, to maybe get this. That's extremely powerful. What he talks about is how do you get a website to convert? Now, he talks about a landing page, but the landing page in this particular example, what we're talking about is the homepage. So how do we get a homepage that converts? 
because the homepage is the most important page on your website. And he basically makes it very simple to understand. What he does is he, is he puts a point for each of those um, kind of things, C-O-N-V-R-T-S, V-R-T-S, and he does it. And I'm, I'm not going to cover it in too much detail because I think the best thing is to actually mail it and you can read through it, but I just want you to understand how he puts this post together. He's saying that these, you don't want people, you want them to take act. This is, this is the untus de jure. You don't want people to visit your page. You want them to take action once they are there. So make it easy and compatible by including these elements found in, and as I said, a landing page, in this case being a home page. A clear call to action. And then what he does for each of these points is he actually shows you, he actually shows you what does he mean by a clear call to action. So what he does is he actually shows you what are the considerations, et cetera. And then he shows you an example of a bad one. So he says the cautionary tale, meaning a bad one. And in this case, the bad call to action is foresters. And the reason is there is no call to action here. It's not, it's not pointing in any direction. And then he shows you one that is doing it right, which is pocket. What is the call to action here? Sign up now. So what he does for each of these points is he shows you so that you can understand. He shows you a clear call to action. What is the cautionary tale? The cautionary tale, the foresters, can you see there's no button? There's nothing that's really pushing the user in the direction that you want them to take. And then he shows you the doing it right version, which is pockets. There's the clear call to action. If we get on to the next one, I'll just do one other one just to show you quickly. Is the offer, possibly the most important one. What are you actually offering people on your website? Are you offering them a service? Are you offering them a product? The offer is anything you want to give your visitors. So the cautionary tale is this one here, triple A. And the doing right is this. Okay, start off with 300 bonus miles. So they're actually giving you an offer. It sounds like, well, how could I incorporate that into my own site? But you can. It requires thought. The next one, I'll do the last one with you, is the, well, in actual fact, I want to do the last one with you because this is possibly the most important one that is left for last, which is called social proof. Now, social proof, which we get there, I'll just show you that. That's the last one. You can go through the others. Um, let's just show, let's just see where that is. That's the resolution. So I hope you guys understand. It gives you an example of doing it badly and then doing it well. Um, okay, now social proof. When we get there, social proof are things like testimonials. They things like industry logos. So let's say, for instance, you're a physiotherapist you'd want to include the industry logo of the physiotherapy bodies. You would want to, another form of social proof is testimonials. Client testimonials, incredibly important. These are all things that create kind of, uh, they give people the, the comfort to buy from you. Um, and they incredibly important and they take a number of different, um, there are a number of different forms. Testimonials. So for instance, I'll just show you this one here. This is social proof here. What they've done is they've said, over 3,000 happy customers. They've said the world's number one AB testing solution. They've got client logos. They've, so this one has actually got three pieces of social proof. They've got this one over here. They've got over 3,000 happy customers and then they've got client logos. Those are all social proof, incredibly important for, for um, conversion. And the most, in, in our instances, I would imagine the most important pieces of social proof that we should have are testimonials. So if you have a look at my site, I've featured testimonials. I've even got a page for testimonials and I actually include testimonials in nice and big on my website here at the bottom. So that is, that would say so that's social proof um, and critically important to, to have. Right, I wanna just cover this now quickly in the next three to five minutes. The good news. So if this sounds like a whole lot of a big balagan and it's a mission, the reality is it's not. All of these things can actually be achieved in days. That's how, so if you have an existing website to apply the things that I've, I've mentioned in the webinar so far, you could actually get done in a matter of a day, two days. It's, it's pretty quick to do. Um, none of this is very costly 
Um, you can do it, and most importantly, you can do it all yourself. Um, the other thing that I will tell you about the good news is that, and in actual fact, uh, I've, I've learned everything or many of the different uh, tactics that I've learned, it's all YouTube, it's all available for you, it's all free. You can learn all of these things. It really just requires you to sit down, um, watch a few videos and actually get stuck in. But there's no real cost to it. So if you have an existing business and your, your website doesn't look good and you're you know, and you want to employ all of these tactics, it's really not hard. The other thing is, over the last, say, maybe five years, is that there are some incredible CMSs, contact management systems, the likes of WordPress, um, the likes of, even to a degree, Magento, and, and all the online ones, the like Wix. These things are set up to make, to build the building of a website these days is not what it was five, seven years ago, we actually had to know code. The average man in the street should be able to build a website with, say, WordPress, which is what I recommend um, in a matter of days. It really is not difficult to do. You just need to be um, pointed in the right direction, the right videos to watch. As I mentioned, if you want that video on, on the WordPress course, it's a good one for those that haven't built a site or please mail me. I'll, I'll give you the link. And yeah, guys, it's the good news is that I promise you it's not hard to do. Everyone can do it. You can do it quickly. You can do it easily, and it yields results. It's not um, something that you'll do, and um, it won't yield results. It's not time wasted. It's time well spent. And on that note, I'm a little bit tired of my own voice. So if I can hand back over to Tracy for the Q&A. Thank you so much, Gary. For me, one of the key takeouts is how important your mobile device is. And, you know, in the olden days when people kind of built their website, it was how it looked on a, on a desktop specifically. And there is nothing worse, I know, especially for myself, looking at a phone where you can't see anything. Things are cut out, they're displayed unevenly and and I think that's the primary focus that we should all strive to achieve. Most of us on this call today have websites. The other key takeout for me, Gary, is that less is more and it's not all about millions of pictures and content. It needs to be, your website needs to be user-friendly, easy to navigate and um, to be able to get to the point. I love the uh, contact forms. I, I love having a form. And wow, it's been amazing, especially because we are currently in the process of redoing the Jet website. And the key takeouts have been really incredible for me. Um, I'd like to open up the Zoom room. Please all feel free to unmute yourselves, to put your videos on if you are comfortable. And let's have a discussion. Let's ensure to really pick Gary's brains over the next 20 minutes so that we all have answers to the questions. Um, Gary can give us answers to the questions that we all have this morning. Yeah, Tracy, again, just, uh, Charlene, just quickly, uh, what, you, what you said is, is, is absolutely right. Where, where it's at is mobile. So I'm glad that that, that came across because that's where um, and and just, to, just to add to that is that a number of us are now still building sites and we're working with web developers or mm. whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, the web, a web developer, and, and it's quite a common problem that I see is that a client goes to a web developer and they build them the website and they show me the site and say, right, Gary, but you know, we're not getting any business and nothing's happening. And the first thing that I do is look at mobile. I say, yeah, but you're, on mobile, your website is atrocious. And, and what you need to be cautious of, again, just a little golden nugget, if you're going to employ a developer, is make sure that you that you tell them that you, you, you're aware. Because what the developers do is they give you the website, they send you the link, you open it on your laptop, it'll be unbelievable. My website is amazing, but it's not going to get you the results you, you want because on mobile it's not that effective. Yes. yes. Anyway. I see, um, Lisa, you have your hand raised. Please feel free to ask Gary your questions. Hi. Hi, Gary. How's it, Lisa? Um, so I'm actually a graphic designer, but um, I do websites, but I'm still learning. So mm -hmm. I hope the question I'm going to ask is not 
doesn't come across as stupid, but for me, it's an important question with no, what I'm doing right now. Ask. Don't worry, there's no, there's no but, stupid question. Okay, so, so the reason I'm asking it is because I'm busy designing a website for a client and okay, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm new to doing websites and on the slider section, you know, the banners at the top, I mean, this client wants like about six or seven of them. And I hope this isn't a silly question, but can you have banners that aren't clickable or is that a waste of time? I mean, is it okay for some to click to, to, to links, you know, to products and things and then others just to be almost like visual therefore visual um, usage, or is that wrong? So the truth is, it depends. <laughs> it depends on what the website actually does. Really, the, the answer to that that I would give you is, on a WooCommerce or, a, or an e-commerce site, where you're actually trying to sell a product, it's very important that those, uh, that those, those banners have some form of call to action on them and take the user to a specific place. But if it's just generally showcasing products or putting a, a banner for a, a local business and that it's really not that important to, to have those banners clickable, okay. no. Um, the other thing that also okay. just re regarding the, the banner design is wh which banner build are you using? Are you using, which one are you using? No, well, the way I'm doing it is I'm working with a developer. So I'm actually doing it the long way where I'm designing it in a design program, I'm doing it in Illustrator, and then mm -hmm. I'm sending them the PDFs and the developer is actually taking the PDFs oh, and doing it because I don't know how to actually work in WordPress. Yes. So I'm still doing it the long way, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain because you've got to give them, but no, so I, I don't know what the they clickability of those banners is, is honestly, it's, it's, not a, it's not a critical fact at all. And you can also, the, 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 one, the only thing that I will tell you is make sure on, on the banners that the image sizes are small because those sliders that we put on a website are one of the key drivers of slow loading sites. I see Adam Osrin yeah. there and Israel smiling because he's a web developer himself that I, I see him smiling. So be careful with putting the, those banners on. Make sure the images are very, very small. And the other thing that you can do on the website is you can have the sliders. They look beautiful on, on a desktop computer, but they should be hidden on mobile. I wouldn't have those oh. banners. So you can actually, these days, especially if it's WordPress, is on a desktop, you can have those beautiful big image banners and you can tell the developer, I don't want that particular element, i.e. the banners to appear on mobile. So just another point that you should maybe tell your developer. And so one last question, what is there a perfect size for a banner, that top banner? No, but it should, should be full width. Okay, so full width is what, 1980, I think. Well, it's 1920 by 1080, Adam Osrin. How big is a full width banner? Um, God, I actually can't remember because I'm busy working on redoing uh, the site that I have with a friend. Um, and we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, so it, uh, it, generally 19, it depends, yeah, it depends on what size screen they're, they're viewing it on. But if you want to be covered, you should go with a, a width of 25. To 2440. The width of 2440 will have you covered. Okay, thanks. Perfect, thank you. Okay, sure. Feel free, Lisa, to, you know, if you want to mail me and ask any other questions, I'll, I'll I appreciate that. that. Thank you. Adam, your hand is raised. Mine yeah. also. Ah, and yes, Charlene was, Charlene got knocked off the queue. She was, she was up at the top and then she went straight down. Okay, go ahead. No, Charlene, you go and then I'll go after. Okay, thank you. Ladies, Jen, first. Um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, it's been very informative. I've got a few questions. How many pages is our optimum? Number one, and is there better a better size or better content that is age-related. I'm an audiologist and my, yeah, so my clients, I'm an audiologist and I mostly deal with older people, 65 plus up to 95 sometimes. So is there a better way of doing it to access those clients? That's number one. How quick in terms of loading? I think you did mention it. 
And in terms of the testimonials and reviews, does it have to be that the, the client posts it on the website? Because I've asked people to do um, reviews and written wonderful things, but they've sent it to me on email. So now on Google, Google My Business, you can't post from somebody else. Okay, so to answer, uh, okay, let me try. Let me try and give you the answers to those. So, okay. the amount of pages on a website is dependent on on the business um, itself. You know, it's, it's totally dependent on the business or the niche that you're in. For an audiologist, I, I, I would be looking at basically just the five page informational websites. I wouldn't be looking at anything more than that. Um, from a front end. Uh, I might be looking, you know, at a later stage. So I'm saying just from an aesthetic and information to your, your older audience, I wouldn't bamboozle them with anything more than five pages. I would okay. give them a five-page website. The kind of pages for an audiologist would be home, about me, the FAQs, very, very simple, straight to the point um, type of website. Having said that, and this is off topic, but you also, now you're going to need to drive traffic to your site. Remember this web, this, this kind of forum is just to get your, what should my website encompass? It's got nothing to do with driving people and getting people to come to the site. At a later stage, you might have a blog if you are a good writer, or you may have something like that, where you could do interesting blog posts, mainly for the, the reason of trying to get those, those posts to rank in Google to get them to your site. But off the bat, to answer your question, I would go with a five-page website. Okay, thank you. My to answer your testimonials question, you spot on. The way that the way that people leave testimonials on Google My Business is that they log into their Gmail account and they would then review you. They would go to your business, uh, Google My Business, and actually review you. But what you can do is you can ask them to mail them to you or you can pull them off Google My Business and you would post and, and put them onto your website. Okay. So in actual fact, what I'm saying is those of views we would have to get from them either if they've left it on if they've left it on uh, your Google My Business, they've posted it in the public domain, and out of courtesy, I would still probably contact them and say thanks for your amazing review. Do you mind if I feature it on my website? No problem, and put it on the site. But critically important, I think you got that from the reviews. Remember, one form of social proof. Charlene, one other one other form of social proof that I would I would maybe feature for you is yes. the, I would I would have a few things on your audiologist site. I would have the amount. I would say, how long have you been an audiologist? Judging by my wrinkles, many many years. But yes, but I would actually <laughs> I would actually maybe I would actually maybe say there um, over thirty years experience. Again, it's social proof. So your social proof would be the testimonials, the amount of time. That you've been and you can maybe even say like thousands thousands of of uh, people helped over the last 20 years those are all pieces of social proof not only the testimonial okay can i ask another question do you mind yeah. Adam? and must is it is it proof if they don't if they don't want to put their name if it's anonymous because people don't like wearing hearing aids the younger generation do 50 below, don't mind it, because we all used to things in our ears, but the older generation think it makes them look old. So they don't admit and they don't like to promote. Mm -hmm. They're just it's obviously better if you can put the name. If you can put yeah. the name, out, you know, to have an anonymous one, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that you would get, um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't post that as a, you know, hi, I can hear much better. Charlene, you're the best. Anonymous. <laughs> you know? No. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I think you, would, you would need to get, and I'm sure that you've got enough clients over the years that would be more than happy to have a little testimonial feature. Yes, but most of them don't know how to use a computer, etc. Anyway, well, they can read it to you, and you can write it out. And you can get it on. They can okay. read it to you. Okay, fine. All right. Thank you. Is that answered uh, what you needed? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure. Pearl. Hi there, Gary. So nice to have you here. And I'm going to be picking your brain. Sure. Um, I'm just in the process of setting up a WordPress site. I have had before, but some time ago. If 
you know, if you want to make your homepage called another name, like, or make your homepage your landing page, how would you do that? So the way that WordPress, uh, very, very, very easy. The way that WordPress works is, um, and I'm just going to show you with my hands because it's easier for me to, you have um, WordPress installed. So WordPress is kind of like Windows. It's the, the framework. Mm -hmm. Then on, inside of WordPress, you have what's called a theme, which is the basic layout. Okay. I'm not sure if you know about the theme. Sorry, I didn't get that called the what? Yeah, what's called a WordPress theme. Yes, no, I've got a theme. Okay. And what your theme allows you to do is it allows you to select any of the pages that you actually build as your homepage. So you don't okay. have to, it's literally, it's like almost one click. You can okay, say so if you wanted your contact page, when you're building out all these different pages, in your theme settings, you will have the okay. option to say, use this as my own page. Okay, that, that's really helpful. And then just another thing, you know, when people do like a vertical line like that, so they might say business motivation, and then they use that vertical. What does yes. that actually do? Uh, it doesn't really do anything. It's called a pipe symbol, P-I-P-E. Okay. It's just a way, it's, it's just really a separator, if I can call it that. Okay. But right, it's, got no, it's got no practical use. Okay. So for SEO, it wouldn't really be helpful. No, I'm, I kind of know why you're doing that because you've seen Yoast or you've seen one of those yes, SEO that's what plugins. I, and yes, so I, that's I, I kind of know why you're asking that question. But that pops up signal, and I'll, I'll just show you quickly. Am I still sharing? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> and now? Yes. yes. Your presentation. There you go. Okay, so just to answer your question is, uh, let's not do that one. Let's go uh, the best. That pop signal is mainly for this. And I'll show you when we can okay. find a result that's showing the pop. Okay, it's funny. It's because, where do we find one with the pop? There's one. But said luxury, whatever. Um, well, it's generally, this is a bad example, but it's so that it's just a separator for, for your meta description in your meta. It's just so that you, this section in the search result can look better. Okay. okay. So it's got no real, okay. it's got no functional, um, it okay. does nothing for SEO besides okay, making your result look better in the search result. Okay, and then would you do it like before the first word and then after the last word? Yes, okay. I would do it. I would do it to. I would. I would use those pop signals for phrases. So I would have one phrase in a pop and then another one in a pop. Okay, perfect. Thanks. It's just always baffled me, and I can never get anyone to answer. So thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Sure thing. Everyone else is asleep, Tracy. Uh, Gary, can I ask my question quickly? Sure. Um, okay, so um, my work partner and I, we busy building a e-commerce digital marketing site. Right. Okay? And you said the best thing to do is product images. Now, the best money that you can spend in the beginning is yeah. spend the money on, on, on the best... Kind of, and the most it's critical that those product images are great. Would you say we should use product images or icons? Because at the moment, with us building our website, we have icons, so um, we offering kind of like copywriting, we offering website design, and all of that type of stuff. So for website design, we kind of have a image of an icon image of a computer screen with a web in it. And for copywriting, we have a piece of paper with lines on and a pen with it. Would mm -hmm. that work or should we maybe try find images which relate to what services we have in? Yeah, so that's a difficult one to, to answer because it kind of depends on, you know, the, the your creator, what you've got in mind for the site. So, it is difficult to represent like web design or or in, anything like that with a with, with a like a JPEG or a PNG. Mm. So 
again, it, it really, it, it, the answer to that is that it's got to conform with your site design and what looks good creatively. Um, you could also go with things like find a kind of like a like a, an animated web designer. So have an image of an, a web designer like as a, a caricature, you know, with overlaid copy, you say web design. So, but again, that, that purely has got to do with your vision for how the site should look. Okay. Please, Gary, can I ask a question? Sure. Can I go ahead? Um, for the images, as you say, it's got to be a certain quality on, on specifically the, the cell phone. I get that. Are we, um, because I do believe what you say, it's not just pass about people, it's pass about people with their cell phones that really matter. And so I'm asking about the images. The images, um, can we copy from inter the internet? Can we download from the internet? Or do you suggest we take our own visual camera and take the shot ourselves and just leave it like that without embellishing it and, 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 and show it that way? Or what do you suggest, please? Okay, let me, let me, let me answer it. Let me just give you a, a proviso. First of all, um, Images are generally copyright on, on, there's a lot of copyrighted images that on Google that you know, you're, not enti you're not really allowed to use, but I'm a slightly naughty boy and sometimes I use those copyright images. Um, and in my 18 years of experience, um, I've never actually had, I've had once where the web host has contacted me and said, this image is copyright, take it down. So, okay, um, just so that you know that I've, I've, it's no real, but there's enough free images and image repositories that you can find what you want. But to get to your question of um, should we be taking them or should we pull it off, off the internet, the answer is what product are you trying to sell? So, for instance, if, if the image, if there's a beautiful image that's readily available on Google, and for instance, let's say you were selling, let's say you were selling a computer masks, right? If you were able to get all the, the, the masks in blue, red, and they were nice and uniform, so... You would, they would all be the same size. You would have the blue one, you would have the red one, and you would have the yellow one, and they're all available on Google. I would utilize those. If you can't get uniform, uniformity of the images and you can't get the quality that you want, then I would suggest that you, you know, that you pay a photographer or you, you, you get a way of getting those images. Can I ask what, what your site would be? Um, of, of a building, a building, a, a unit. Something like that, the outside. Oh, the art, are you selling a, an apartment block, let's say? No, renting. Oh, for rentals. Okay, so you look at renting an apartment block on the outside. Yeah, so those are, you've got to be a little bit cautious there because obviously the images, you can't use other agents' images. Mm -hmm. So on that, in that particular instance, I would advise you to get a, a photographer to go in and take proper images. In this instance, because by using, even if there was a apartment block A in Cyril Dean, you know, you use that, it's obviously been done by another agent and you'd get into trouble for that. So I wouldn't do that. And the yeah. quality. Yes, thank you. thank you. Anyone else? Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any can, other can hands. Can I ask? Raise? Sorry, I forgot to raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Gary, I want to ask you, I mean, I know that PNGs are generally used if you want a transparent background, but generally on a website, is it better to use PNGs, save as PNGs, your general products, product images or JPEGs and your logos too? None. None? You, Boy, how's okay. that for a shocking answer? So yeah, Google have sorry. recently introduced a new image format called WebP. I'm not sure okay. if you've seen it. Nope. So Google have now tried to standardize the, the images that they are wanting on websites because what happened in the past is you had slow loading images, you had um, image, images pixelating, et cetera, et cetera. The, from a Google point of view, from a Google point of view, the, the most compressed and what Google are pushing for are the, new, the newest format of images, which over time will overtake both PNG and JPEG, and they're called WebP. And that's over the last year. 
So and how do I, I mean, an illustrator and all the software I use, but there's no option like that. There's SVGs, PNGs, TIFFs, JPEGs. There's no web. They will, how do you say it? How if they say don't it? have it. So if they don't have it, they will, I'm sure they will have it soon. I'm no expert okay. on it. I can just tell you, how do you create a, a WebP? I could, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, I'm sure all the graphics program boys will, will allow you to do that. Let's, let's well, let you have a quick until look. then, what can we use? What's best until well, that? The, the answer to whether or not PNG or JPEG is better doesn't really make a difference. It's the one that will give you the most compressed files, file size with the best quality. So the format's not that important. It's the, it's the end result. It makes no difference to the user or to Google if it's a PNG or Google. It's whatever will give you the best um, quality image and, and the best size. It's the, so that, that they load quickly. So there's so no basically there's no preference. Which one generally does that? Well, I mean, if you've got a, if you need transparency, go you know use PNGs. Um, and in general, um, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, JPEG allows for the best compression. Okay, thanks. But there's and no there's no real specific uh, there's no impact. It's just with what you can with your your manipulation with your image editing, where you can get a great image that's smaller. I, I think let's just see. A, I think. Um, JPEG actually has uh, is got a better compression algorithm. Yeah, um, from my experience, just been building a few websites for friends and that as well. Um, JPEG, uh, it's better compression, but the quality of it sometimes isn't the best. If you want very good quality compared to compression, then go with PNG. Otherwise, you can do a JPEG but just be aware quality can be less. So you've okay. got to weigh it up, Lisa. You've got to see like, can I get a weight? So first, first prize would be to do a JPEG because you've got the compression. But if you can't get the quality at a, with, with the JPEG, then maybe, maybe do the PNG. Okay, thanks. And, and obviously where I can, it's best to use, I assume SVGs because they're vectors and I assume they won't take up as much space SVG's on the web. Even, SVG is even better. Okay. Thank but start, you. Lisa, start um, educating yourself about WebP because Google is pushing for that hard. Okay. Well, maybe, yeah, if you can let us know when you discover how we do that, I'd love to know sure. how to do that. I'm going to ask uh, Tracy to... To put my email address in the chat or maybe i can actually thank you yourself. so i'm gonna put okay. you um so i'd like to thank everyone for all your questions for ensuring that this morning's webinar has been interactive and everything that you were questioning has been answered um, I did speak to Gary at the beginning of the webinar and I asked him please to run more sessions for AutoJet. So I look forward to receiving his um, suggestions, topics, dates and times to schedule many more webinars with Gary. I think in today's webinar, Gary spoke a lot about golden nuggets and I think we all take a treasure chest of golden nuggets with us home today. Gary, certainly not true what I said at the beginning of the webinar. Everything I said about you, not only your mother would say, but in fact, every participant on the call today, because you've given us so much valuable tools to work with. You spoke a lot about testimonials and AutoJet have the most incredible library of testimonials. If you would like to send us a testimonial, again, you can email admin at autojet.org.za.